So they mocked you. They rejected you. They scorned you. They spat upon you. They threw rocks at you. They tried to bury you. They left you for dead. They threw you into the pit. They wanted the flood waters of insurmountable odds and terrible circumstances to sweep you away. They held secret meetings on you. And yes, some of them even went to the witch or the sorcerer. They sent darts at you and your children. They didn't want to see you eat bread. They wish that you would just go away. They said that your continued testimonies and your continued witnessing to lost souls is a nuisance to them. They try to belittle you. They lie on you. They scandalize your name. They have set themselves in array against you. They have come upon you to eat up your flesh. They have sent fiery darts at you. They call people to come together to bear false witness against you. They want to see you desolate. They want to see you and your seed beg bread. But as David said, I once was young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed beg bread. So, child of God, I've come by today to give you some good news. And this good news, as usual, is found in the written word of God. And the word comes to us today concerning this. All of these tests and trials and the tribulations you face as a child of God. And a child of God who has surrendered their will to the Father and is working their assignment. The word comes to us today from 1 Peter chapter 5. I'm sorry, 1 Peter chapter 4 and beginning at verse 12 and ending at verse 16. And the subtopic for this section of the scripture, 1 Peter 4, 12 to 16, is suffering for God's glory. In this earth, as a child of God, we will suffer many things. So we may as well suffer for God's glory. We may as well suffer to bring souls to the saving knowledge of Yeshua the Christ. We're going to suffer anyway, right? So why not suffer for Jesus' sake? Why not suffer working for the kingdom? Why not suffer here in this earth for good, knowing that your prize is an eternal heavenly prize? This earth has nothing to give to you because whatever the earth can give you will pass away. Why not suffer for the things that are eternal that will never pass away that no man can break in and rob and steal and that moth cannot corrupt or eat up? Why not suffer for the cause of Christ? So I read for you to encourage you. 1 Peter 4.12 Beloved, that's the child of God. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to prove you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partners of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you are criticized for the name of Christ, happy are you, for the spirit of praise and of God rested upon you. On their part, Christ is criticized. He is evil spoken of. But on your part, in your life, Christ is glorified. 
But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a meddler in other men's matters. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Glory be to God. Suffering for God's glory. I am of the view that the more you let go of this world, the more you turn your back to the things of this world and face God, you will suffer many things. But you are suffering for a good cause. You are suffering to bring, bring glory to God's name. And in so doing, many souls will come to Christ. Many souls will surrender, will renounce Satan and sin, and will confess their sins and accept Jesus Christ as Lord. Listen, I am of the view that I will suffer for the cause of Christ. There is nothing and no one in this world that can compare. There is nothing and no one in this world that can cause me or tempt me to let go of God's unchanging hand. I will continue to serve the true and living God, Yahweh. I will continue to serve the risen Son of God, Yeshua the Christ. I will continue to move with the Holy Spirit of God as He uses me in these end days to witness, to bring souls back to the Father. We came from God. We were in heaven with Him before He created the first thing seen and unseen in this earth. So when we live for Him, we're going back home. Glory be to God. Don't you want to go back home to Father? Let's continue to serve God. Be not weary in well-doing, for you shall reap a reward if you faint not. You be blessed, be encouraged, and stay with God. In Yeshua's name, I love you. Amen.